Hello and welcome to your first higher computing science lesson. We're going to jump right in with some advanced programming concepts. Over the course of this topic, we'll introduce a lot of new material, new data structures. We're moving away from using just 1D arrays. We'll look at records, parallel arrays, and arrays of records. We're going to look at more predefined functions. We'll use the modulus operator, and we'll use predefined functions for working with ASCII values. We'll create sub-programs and functions to make our programs more modular, increasing their maintainability and reusability. We'll read and write to files to bring large data sets into our programs and output values to files to store them for future use. We'll also increase our knowledge of standard algorithms as we explore the fine minimum and maximum algorithm, the linear search algorithm and the count occurrences algorithm. At National 5 level, the only data structure that we used was the 1D array. You may have pictured this like a table. In short, a 1D array stores many values of the same type, like integer or string, under one identifier or name. Each value in the array is stored at the position or index value in the array, starting at zero. In the array below, we'd refer to the first piece of data as index zero with the value Isla. Look at the code in the example below. This is the array traversal algorithm from National 5, used to move through an array using a loop. Beneath the code, I've got an example of what the output will look like. Note the three ellipses used to indicate that the output has been cut off due to being quite long. We'll now switch to Replit to see this program running. I'll do this frequently throughout your video lessons. Well, here we are in Replit. I'm going to click the Run button now on this code. As we can see, the loop runs through the array and prints out the value of the array at each index position. Now you're going to complete task 1.1. It's a revision task, so it shouldn't take you too long. You can pause the video here and return to it when you're finished this task. Please make sure you submit it on Google Classroom. We're now going to look at the record data structure. It's different to using our 1D arrays in that we can hold different data types within one identifier. A single record, or an instance of a record type, will likely be information about one person, object or thing. You are familiar with the term record from databases at National 5 level, and they do work in a very similar fashion. It's not unhelpful to think about records in this manner. In National 5 databases, you had to create the empty table before you could create records which hold actual data under those table attributes. And in programming, records operate in a similar fashion. It's a two-step process. Firstly, we have to define the structure. What data do we need to store in general terms? Name it. And what type of data is it? Give it a variable data type. Secondly, we need to create the instances of our structure to store our actual data in our program. All right, let's consider the Star Wars movies. <laughs> I think that's enough considering now. There's loads of different data points that we could actually store in a computer program for each of these movies. But for the purposes of this example, we're only going to store the title, the episode number, the release year, the main character, and whether or not I like the film. And we're going to call that the McWhorter factor. So let's firstly look at how this might be written in your exam paper if you were to get a question on records. I've given you this example in SQA Haggis. Looking at the record, we can see that we start off by giving the record structure a name and I've called this record Star Wars. Following on from that, in curly brackets, we put the different variables that are gonna be contained within our record structure. Title, episode number, release year, main character, and the McWhorter factor. Now you might notice that earlier we said we're going to give each of these a data type as well, and we haven't done it. Well, that's because that's over to you as a bit of revision as well. Task 1.2, is called Star Wars Data Types, and you're gonna to have to give me a data type for each of these variables. 
Please pause the video now, complete this task on Google Classroom, and then you can resume the video. So now you've completed the task on assigning data types to the different variables within the Star Wars record. Hopefully they match up with mine as shown in the example below. I've given the title a string data type, the episode number an integer data type, the release year an integer data type, the main character a string data type, and the McWhirter factor a boolean data type. Note that we haven't stored any data inside our structure yet, we've just defined what this data is going to look like. We now need to create instances of our record and we're going to see an example of that in SQA Haggis language now. So below, again I've got my record structure being defined on the first two lines of code below, but on the third line we've got an instance of that record created and we've called that instance ep1. We've set ep1 to a Star Wars type and in brackets we've put the different values which are going to be stored in the variables within the record in order. So the title is going to be The Phantom Menace, the episode number is going to be 1, the release year is going to be 1999, the main character is going to be Anakin Skywalker, and the McWhirter factor is going to be false. Notice we've only created a single instance of the record type here. We couldn't store any of the other movie's information inside EP1, it only has room for the details about the Phantom Menace. To access data within a record instance, we use something called dot notation. This is the same in Haggis as it is in Python. On line 4 of our SQA Haggis example, you can see we have the line send ep1.title to display. In the output box, you can see it prints the Phantom Menace. We can access any of the variables within an instance of a record by using this dot notation using the variable defined inside the record. So for example, if we wanted to print out the release year of episode 1, we'd type send ep1.releaseYear to display. So Python doesn't actually have a built-in way of creating records in the way that we need to use them, so we're going to use the data classes library in order to create our records. So in this next example, we're going to create a working record structure in Python for the Star Wars saga, but it won't be complete. At the end, you'll need to complete a task sheet and two programs of your own as well. So let's switch to Replit now. So the first thing I have to do is import the data classes library. So we're used to doing that with our random um, predefined functions from national five level. So that's nothing new to us. We're then going to create the structure of our Star Wars structure, just like we did in our Haggis pseudocode. The first thing I have to do is use something called the data class decorator. So I'm going to type at data class. We don't need to worry about what that does. It just lets Python know that we're going to create a data class. It won't be in your exam, but you will have to use it if you use data classes in your coursework. So I'm then going to create our record structure. So this is like saying record Star Wars. I'm going to type class Star Wars. And that's my record created. I now need to state our type of data and what it's called. So I'm going to give the values title. And I'm going to set that to be a string. And episode number. And that's going to be an integer. Now that I've created this structure, I'm going to create an example of an instance of this record now as well. So I'm going to set the value ep1 to Star Wars. So that's the type that we created on line 5. And I'm going to give it the values the Phantom Menace. And it was released as episode number 1. Now that I've got my instance set up, I can access the values within that instance. So I can print out ep1.title. Let's run that and see what that looks like. Prints out the Phantom Menace. And we can start to do things like concatenate that onto other strings. So for example, print the first Star Wars movie is comma, 
ep1.title. And then I can click run. And it says the first Star Wars movie is The Phantom Menace. Now it's over to you with some tasks. All our task sheets will be stored on Google Classroom. Task 1.3 is just a link to Replit, but it should automatically add you to the classroom where all our assignments will be stored, as long as you're already signed into Replit. Task 1.4 and Task 1.5 both have a task sheet on Google Classroom and an assignment to complete on Replit. Read both of these task sheets and submit both assignments on Replit. Task 1.5 will require you to also submit a task sheet on Google Classroom as well. Pause this video now and complete the tasks. In summary, we've looked at data structures in computer programming. They are used to store multiple pieces of data under one identifier. We've designed a record data structure to hold information of different variable types. This was a limitation of our records at National 5 level in that they could only hold data of the same type. We have implemented a record data structure in both Haggis reference language which you'll see in your exam and Python programming language which you'll use for your coursework. We must define a record structure and then create named instances of the record structure to hold our actual data. We can access the data within a record instance using dot notation. Next lesson, we're going to look at arrays of records. See you next week.